Of course, one of the things our guidebook pointed out to us as a point of interest is the liquor store. It might be just before noon, but we're kind of craving a nice cold beer, so maybe just pop in and get like a Sands or Kalik. It's the freaking weekend. But I'm about to get run over, so I gotta get out of the road. But like Matt said, it's the freaking weekend. You can start drinking at 11.45. Last time on MJ Sailing, while stationed in Palm Beach, we finally were able to put up our brand new head sail from Precision Sails and gave a review of its last 1,200 miles with us. And Matt spends the day at Juno Beach learning the art of kiteboarding with a little help from our friend Dave. So kind of an exciting morning. We uh, woke up and looked outside, I heard someone dropping anchor chain next to us. Um, woke up and it's one of our sister ships. There were, we think maybe five built. Um, obviously we know ours, we know Maywan, the guy that sailed uh, Northwest Passage and down to Australia now. And this other one, they contacted us a while ago uh, when they saw our videos and stuff on this, uh, rebuilding this boat. And he's actually here right now. I just got back from the Bahamas. So we're going to go kind of take a quick tour and see what our sister ship looks like. Yeah, see what the interior looks like. Probably going to be a bit different than ours. Going to be a bit different than ours. Ours has this kind of pilot house, quasi-pilot house, deck salon thing. Um, they do not. They have an aft cabin here. So it's going to be a bit different uh, going through it. But let's go. As soon as we got up to the stern of Luare, immediately noticed a difference between our two boats. One is the stern scoop, of course, that was welded on after the fact, but they also moved the rudder aft. Um, I don't know if that's going to help him with his weather helm issue. Also, the cockpit is a bit different than ours, too. Our cockpit combing is a little higher than his is. Um, it does give the impression of more space on his boat. There is definitely a different feel between the two boats with... Uh, the difference with a, co a cockpit height and combing height. Once you get inside, you can kind of see the idea of how our boat most likely looked um, when it first came out from the factory. Um, a bit different, of course, than what we have it now, uh, but it's nice to see what that original look was. Hi. So this is how our... Uh, Welcome to the Loire. <laughs> is that how you pronounce it? Loire. Loire. <laughs> yeah. Does it mean anything? It's a French region, which... Uh, have nothing to do with oh, in, in the further the, the France, not oh, the previous oh, okay. oh, okay. the guy that got it had it built well, actually it was from that region, so oh, okay, oh, cool. it's called it but it's a it's quite a well known boat, everyone knows this boat because the, the guy that sold it to me he used to ride on a sailing magazine. Our galley is, of course, laid out a bit different now. We changed that around, we changed out the nav seat aft of the galley is where you really are going to notice the biggest difference between our two boats. With our raised pilot house section, we end up having a full salon back there. And then over on the other side where we have a raised nav desk, he's got a, a normal height nav desk. It was just fun going aboard our sister ship to check out the differences. Oh, and on a side note, um, I unfortunately didn't get it on camera, but our Last head sail, the one that we've been using in the Bahamas, the one that blew out and I had to fix, uh, is now sailing on another tree salute. Our sister ship uh, gave it to Philippe the other day because he was going to be in the market in a year or two. So we figured if he can get one more season out of it, you know, good for him. I'll feel good that all the hard work I put into it. Before he goes to Precision Sales and buys a new head sail. <laughs> exactly. So he can get one more season from our sale before he hopefully goes to Precision to get a new one since they've already got all the specs and they know how to fit one perfectly to the boat now. But uh... So since we moved ourselves to this new area so that we could easily, more easily run errands to the uh, Riviera Beach Marina and we had slightly less wind funneling down the inlet at us to get some projects done, I was complaining to Matt 
that all of the huge, huge mega yachts we see constantly running up and down this little strip here by shore uh, have pretty much stopped coming since we got here. Um, I heard the anchor dropping and we got a pretty big neighbor. And we did wave to them when they came in, but surprisingly they weren't like the rest of the neighbors that would just invite us over for sundowners, so maybe we'll have to take it upon ourselves to go say hi ourselves. Ourselves, let me just say ourselves again. And there's people fishing next to me. About 48 hours ago, um, we left Palm Beach, and sorry I didn't record any of that, but since we just did it not too long ago, it was kind of deja vu-ish. So we took uh, almost the same route across that we originally did. We left Palm Beach and tried to go straight east to West End, just because the Gulf Stream was um, near its height, probably about three to four knots running north. And so we knew that we couldn't go south, but we actually have now ended up in the Berry Islands, did a straight jump from there. It was about with the different tacks and the wind shifting from south to north during our trip. Um, we did about 135 miles in 25 hours and for the most part conditions were pretty good. We had, we don't know what the wind speeds are, our anemometer doesn't work <laughs> still. When we started out from Palm Beach we did have to motor sail across the Gulf Stream just to try and get us on the right path and go as quick as possible but it was kind of fun traveling at about seven, seven and a half knots for most of the trip really smooth too. Uh, luckily none of us, including the cat, got sick this time. The ship traffic was just crazy once we rounded down Great Bahama and past Freeport. Luckily we didn't have any close calls. I think us transmitting AIS now really helped it. Uh, past few times on our last boat serendipity we only had the receiver so we could see the other boats but they didn't pick us up and so it was constantly calling because we'd be on collision courses and I think this time like they would see us that we're just like a little sailboat, so they just adjust course. So that was actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Just a few big cruise ships passing by with their lights blinding you. And um, yeah, then it was kind of a straight shot here to the berries. Yeah, we pulled into Great Harbor around 3.30 yesterday afternoon. Now we're going to be waiting out a huge northern system. Our plan was to go to Spanish Wells and Eleuthera just do a straight shot from Palm Beach, but um, they're going to be getting like five to seven meter waves crashing through there and we don't want to deal with that at all. So we decided the berries are a good place to wait that out. If you can tell the gusts are already starting, it's, we really need to work on our spray hood so we have a protected spot to do these filmings without having the microphone Yeah, the wind. Without the wind. High. Or you can hear the wind generator whizzing away. 
So you can probably hear some of the wind starting to blow through. It's probably going to be 25 to 30. Um, we don't mind sailing in that, but it's just the swells were going to be ridiculous. So we decided to park ourselves here for about three days. Uh, kind of a cruise ship territory. I think Norwegian and Carnival own the two islands just north of where we are. Norwegian and... Uh, Carnival. Nope, it's Royal Caribbean. Okay. Norwegian and Royal Caribbean. And we almost anchored there just to kind of check out the madness, but we wanted a town. So, anything else you'd like to add, Matthew? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we just landed our dinghy on the north end of Bullock's Key or Bullock's Harbor, Bullock's something. It's just a bunch of Bullock's. Isn't that like an English swear word? I was going to say, we need to practice when we get yeah. to England this fall. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is actually a little different than the Abacos. The buildings are a bit more worn down, which is kind of like what we're used to seeing from the Exumas and different areas um, like from the Exumas and Ragged Islands. So this is definitely the Bahamas that we're used to. But our guidebook says that the main street that we're on right now is pretty much like every different type of thing you can find in a settlement, from the nice houses to kind of like the worn down houses, the church, the liquor store, the local hangout. So we're just gonna kind of walk around and see everything they have to offer. Plus today is a Saturday, so we don't know how much action we're going to see. Obviously the school and um, post office, other government type things are going to be closed. Uh, but we did hear that the park, which we don't know if that's where we landed, does um, fish fries or like weekend get togethers, hangouts. So maybe it's just a little too early for that right now, but by the time we head back to the boat, it could be a hoppin joint. So we'll have to see. Of course, one of the things our guidebook pointed out to us as a point of interest in the town here on Great Harbor Key is the liquor store. Apparently they've got over 700 different varieties of wine, but it might be just before noon, but we're kind of craving a nice cold beer, so maybe just pop in and get like a Sands or Kalik or an Eclipse. Haven't had one of those in a few years, but... It's the freaking weekend. But I'm about to get run over, so I gotta get out of the road. But like Matt said, it's the freaking weekend. You can start drinking at 11.45. So, part of those, the lemon. That's all. Oh, is it? Oh, thanks for letting me warning me. <laughs> yes, I think that's gonna be the uh, cure for today. Yeah, tree? That's good. Tree, you have a special one. I saw you say tree. No wine? No wine right now. Okay. Yeah. A little early for that. <laughs> oh wow, there's some big bottles over here. Definitely a good stuff. Wow. So what's in your hands right now? Uh, clicks. Yeah, they're not both for you. No, no. Uh, we got a third in there, so we'll be fighting over that in a little bit. And how to open it too, because we didn't bring a bottle opener, or we'll have to visit the liquor store again. No, no, um, we can do it. Well, there's rocks. But they had a special going of three clicks for $6. Two bucks a piece, you really cannot beat that. So uh, we kind of kept joking that we're just gonna visit the liquor store like every two hours as we wander to fill up on beers. Nice plan. So nice I way to spend a Saturday. Yeah, so, right. cheers. A little tight change. Yeah. Be a fun tube ride through there. Well, back to the boat already it was kind of a short run into town. I don't know if it was just because of the weekend or if it's always like this, but there weren't too many people out. It didn't seem like a whole lot was happening. And the only places that we did see people kind of hanging out was in front of the two liquor stores we passed by, which, you know, I think it's like 
just a cool thing people do on the weekends here. They sit outside, they have a beer with their friends, they hang out, but otherwise every street we walked down was pretty empty. Um, so now we are back at the boat and we think one of our neighbors may have dragged. We had a boat that was pretty close to our back quarter and now it looks like it's really far off and there's people diving right in front of it. They've got their dinky. <laughs> They're dinky. <laughs> uh, they've got their dinghy just in front of it and one person was in the water so um, makes us a little worried about the holding here especially since that heavy northern is going to start coming through tonight and into tomorrow but let's hope that our 25 kilogram mantis is really stuck in the ground and um, and we back down on it at 3000 rpm so we should be set um, yeah, hopefully we're just close enough to shore. We tried to tuck in as far as possible that it doesn't really affect us. Join us in the next episode of MJ Sailing, where we tour the mangrove trails of Great Harbor Key in the Berry Islands and strong northwest winds force us over to the east side of the island where we have a gorgeous thunderstorm waiting for us just after we anchor. In night mode too. This thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's your